Good evening to everyone. Welcome you all to NTA UGC net preparation for paper 1 that is for November 2021 examination and uh, here we are back with a complete revision series in the form of MCQs and in today's series we have uh, I have tried my level best to ensure that we touch all the topics you know maximum topics which are covered under uh, November 2021 cycle. So those who have their examinations uh, scheduled tomorrow uh, definitely can you know uh, go through the revision part uh, uh, before going to the questions the session, uh, i would also uh, like to yes, tell you that we have brought for you one day revision pdf for ugc net paper one this pdf will uh, include MCQs. all the important MCQs topics has, uh, which are like current affairs of, you know pyqs uh, are very important for any examination and the most expected mcqs that you can you must practice before the examination the fees is just 499 and you can contact on this number to get access to this one day revision pdf with the given whatsapp number the fees for same is 499 uh, also we have theory, theory uh, plus mcqs pdf for MCQs. students who we are giving the at UBC net for the subject paper two in geography economics English, commerce management, social work english management hindi or law. law so if, if so these are your subject uh, these uh, pdf will be theory notes as well enough as for your preparation since the exams are closer to only through these PDF you will be able to study the entire the syllabus in a very short time. Triple to get access, uh, you can contact uh, on this number and the fees is for wrong, So I okay. just uh, connected. I hope everything is fine, clearly audible and visible. Just let me know if, if there is any uh, issues or something. Just put it in the chat box uh, so that I can understand can't hear properly what what is happening you can't hear properly means you can't hear at all or the volume is less or what what is happening can you let me know what is the issue uh, yes Shobha what happened uh, one of you those who have joined this session online can you please revert me back uh, what it is everything is fine because uh, Mansa Dev okay fine fine everything is fine okay thank you very much so shall we start uh, the session for the day okay so let's go ahead now so oh god uh, I think sorry the first question only something went wrong with the slides okay no problem we will just um, yeah initially there was double voice i slide also i think something went wrong with the slide my first slide also got misplaced anyways we will just go through this question and uh, let's understand okay so project oscar is an initiative to provide free access to what okay uh, i don't know something happened during arranging the slides so it's okay the answer is visible so let's understand project oscar is an initiative to provide free access to educational animation so this is one of the topic of ict uh, with respect to digital initiative so what is project oscar in that so project oscar basically uh, it is a educational animation shobha now i think this is right i have uh, just reported the issue I don't know I need to check it again whether it is ratified at from the technical team or not so I'll just cross check it once again after the session okay so yes uh, let's understand what is this project Oscar in case if you're not aware of this term project Oscar it is one of the initiative which provides free access to educational animations now what does that means so now Project Oscar is one of the initiative which comes under ICT or digital initiative or which is initiative taken by IIT Bombay to provide free access to educational animations for teaching and learning concepts. So this can be a form of your uh, any type of topic including your ICT digital initiative or teaching learning in the field of specifically science sorry in the field of science and technology so this uh, concept is actually you know uh, an educational animation which is a concept included in the field of science and technology the learning objects in this project range from the topics in various subjects taught at undergraduate and postgraduate level so the both the levels are covered that is undergraduation as well as postgraduation the use of interactive animation ensures enhanced learning 
experience in regular classroom teaching as well as in distance education so it is included in both in the regular as well as in distance mode also little bit of more detail if you want to know about the project oscar first of all what does this oscar represents it's an open source courseware animation repository which provides a repository of way best interactive animations and simulations uh you know in the form of games you can say in the form of lessons or uh, concepts which is referred as learning objects and these learning objects are the topics in science and engineering at college level including maths and science at school level so please remember very clear college level it is for engineering field whereas at school level it is for maths and science students and teacher can view run and download this learning objects and this become a part of our digital initiative which is taken by iit bombay okay so yes good evening to all little bit of technical issue was there at the start but i think everything is sorted out now and let's move ahead with our question number 2 okay now which of the following is not an e learning platform in india so out of the given we have done all the platforms and different different questions so now till now you should be able to understand that from the given platforms okay the given plant platforms are diksha swayam uh, nmeict as well as e pathshala so which of the following is not please remember these not words uh, get highlighted in the question sometimes but you have to read it very carefully so which of them is not an e learning platform in india from the given below so you need to answer the right option yes waiting for the answer okay yes very good so uh, national mission on education with reference to information communication technology that's the full form is not an e learning platform so let's quickly have a look at everything diksha we know it's an online knowledge platform sh uh, sharing platform for school education swayam is a massive open online course platform in india that offers a diverse range of courses nm e i c t that is national mission for education information Com and communication technology is a centrally sponsored scheme to encourage the use of information and communication technology in the field of education yes uh with reference to year also 2009 with and e pathshala is an online learning platform that provides educational resources from the classes first that is from the standard first to standard 12 okay so just remember uh, though the question is you know with respect to something else but any form of the question uh, the voice is very is everything before the class i have checked everything from everyone is facing the issue of voice is it like that is voice is very less today just let me know this voice problem is faced only by a single student or many of them so please uh, so that i can but from my end everything is perfect still okay yes so e pathshala as one of as i said it's one of the online portal learning portal that provides educational resources from classes 1 to classes 12 now see uh, the reason uh, yeah i was what i was telling is that this questions it is not that important that the same type of form of question will come but what is diksha what is swayam what is national mission on education what is e pathshala we have done n number of times so any form of question with respect to this initiative you should be able to remember that is the you know the concept of this question okay M volume from my end is ev everything i have cross check my dear everything is perfect i don't know why it volume you people are not able to hear it all the things are very perfect okay yes so let's go for question number 3 that is match the following where you have list okay one Uh, some of them we have done ju just done now which is in the form of acronym and you have their importance so the first uh, option uh, is n d e a r second is swayam prabha 
third is nios and fourth option is diksha so now when we talk about uh, all these options you have to match them with the list 2 so now list 2 consists of distance learning online knowledge sharing digital education architecture and tv channel so you have to list uh, i mean to say match the list from the given below so uh, swayam prabha nios diksha i mean to say these diksha just now we did a question on that so you should be able to understand and match the correct pair okay students have started answering fine so let's see let's go and understand yes so option number c that's what everyone has highlighted but let's see whether option number c goes how so when we talk about ndar now we have a concept of this that is actually with reference to educational architecture uh, i have a next slide with uh, the detail reference when we talk about swayam prabha yes swayam prabha is nothing but direct to home channels 34 channels please remember that very well nios it talk, talks about distance learning okay national school uh, school of open learning when we talk about diksha it is nothing but online knowledge sharing platform okay so let's see what is the what is the meaning of ndear now this is it refers to national digital education architecture the objective of which is to develop education digital education infrastructure now with reference to what it is uh, it is with reference to your uh, infrastructure it helps in building up a new education ecosystem that will create a digital foundation leading to self governance of all the parties involved i mean to say the with reference to the states or with reference to the center okay now when we talk about swayam prabha now this is what it is with reference to your uh, first option that is national digital education architecture when we talk about swayam prabha as i said it is 34 direct to home channels that telecast educational con content based on school curriculum when i say nios it is nothing but national institute of open schooling which facilitates open and distance learning and diksha which we studied right now it is with reference to sharing the knowledge platform which is used uh, to provide school as uh, through education through a distance mode okay yes so just keep i mean say all the uh, forms any any student who had an exam any management student have joined the class who had an exam today so if you can just help the students who are having their exams in this coming days uh, with the num uh, the type of questions or the topics it will be really great yes now what is vlog okay whether it is a secured logging system whether it's a virtual logging communication whether it is video blogging whether it is an ic uh, sorry in ict there is nothing which is called as vlog so what does the vlog refers to yeah dilip has joined uh, dilip how was your paper specifically you were little bit uh, tensed with uh, your management subject yes fourth answer okay i have started getting answers uh, meanwhile dilip i am just waiting for you know your uh, uh, i need to know just how was the paper little bit curious to know especially paper 1 as well as your management subject also management was tough paper 1 was good uh, okay management what part more of finance was there because uh, last time marketing part was a more focus so this time how it was can if you just put a little bit of uh, you know um, part highlight on that it will be great yes so what is vlog basically vlog is nothing but a video blogging so now what is this video blogging refers to okay it is a video blog or it is also called as video log okay this kind of blogging has a content of videos it is posted by the creator the one who has created the video that is the blogger and expresses his or her thoughts ideas opinions through the videos on a particular subject or a particular in subject of interest so that is the concept the whole concept is called as either video blogging or it is called as video log okay a very common term nowadays so just be careful uh, i mean to say they can give it in any form but you should know the concept is called as video log okay yes coming to a uh, fifth question 
which of these pairing below is incorrect about educational inst sorry initiatives through ICT so whether it is vidwan a database and national researchers network whether it is shodh shuddhi access to qualitative electronic journal resources whether it is diksha education school education infrastructure content tools or whether it is nishtha that is capacity building program for teachers and principals so let me let me answer this question and i will tell you uh, this time in this cycle uh, ugc net has you know utilized or it is using one new term the concept is same uh, but they are using one new term so what it is i'll tell you first answer this question then we will go for next or uh, dilip ram i hope you are there in the class uh, maybe you are typing the topic but just wanted to first of all thank you for joining and just little bit of uh, idea on management okay got your message others please read the question meanwhile i'll just read his message for this time okay so you mean to say that every marketing hr finance everyone was given okay functions of imf who okay so the trade part was also focused on fine uh, yes uh, thank you very much for this yes so when we talk about uh, the pairing so which of which of them is incorrect now see here instead of giving not correct they have used the word as incorrect so yes uh, we uh, that is shows with one we know it is a database diksha of just now we started it is an uh, school edu education infrastructure content nishtha is a capacity building program but shod shuddhi that is a qualitative electronic journal resources no it is basically related to what shod shuddhi is a plagiarism detection software now uh, yes in this cycle uh, when we talk uh, when we spoke about uh, you know uh, this cycle of november 2021 for uh, ugc examination they have used this word instead of plagiarism because plagiarism topic was very common but they, this time you know shod shuddhi was the word which was used by them so it is not for assessing e resources or journal it is an assess to plagiarism detection software for all the un universities and institutions in india so which was started as an initiative to function uh, since 2019 so e shod shuddhi that gives an assess to qualitative electronic journal resources okay Sh uh, sorry e shod siddhu is that which gives assess to the qualitative electronic resource journal so shuddhi is with reference to plagiarism just be be careful with that yes plagiarism uh, shod it is nothing but see this word shod is it's related to research actually the shod is an hindi word means which means research so shuddhi which is with res respect to plagiarism Okay. Okay. Product line, product family, product class. Yes. Okay. Yes. I just was reading with the this Neelam. I just missed your message. I'll just come back to it. Okay. I'll just read the question for the students and I'll come back. which of the following statements are correct with reference to given below okay so there are some statements which you are suppose which are wrong and which are right you are supposed to highlight the statements which are uh, correct okay so nkn stands for new knowledge network moose stands for offline courses national super computing mission is a government of india initiative um clock rate of cpu is measured uh, in gigabytes and param shivai is a supercomputer so what exactly you know it is with reference to which of the statements now here please remember statements are right statements are wrong you are supposed to highlight the correct statements now so which option okay yes let's see okay now individually also we have done this in uh, ict in uh, you know with reference to nkn with reference to move or with reference to supercomputing we have done this individually now they have just put together and they have told you to sort it out so yes let's see option number a okay is uh, are correct now let's see option number a is you know that is your option number c 
National Super Computing Mission is a government of India initiative. Okay, uh, and Param Shivai is a super computer. Okay, this these are the two options which are correct. Now many of you said option number C. That is, you know, C is yes correct. D. A clock rate of CPU is not measured in gigabytes. It's not measured in gigabytes. Elim yeah, elimination round you can do, but still let's let's understand. N K N is uh, it's with reference to no national knowledge network. Here we had new knowledge, so obviously that is you know that is a wrong statement. Okay, moves or online courses there in the question it was written as offline courses, which is again wrong. National supercomputing is a mission which is initiated by government of India. Yes. clock rate of cpu is not measured in gigabytes it is in gigahertz okay and in question it was given as gigabytes okay so just that also went wrong and param shivai is a supercomputer so please remember yes c nafisa uh, c n e i think there was a typing error by you okay so option number a is the right option that is okay you just mentioned option number c and e from the question okay no problem i just i read it little bit different way okay i hope it is very clear with everyone so be careful for this okay very very important individual questions also it can be in a part of okay now a slogan a tree for each child was coined by or coined for what a slogan stated as a tree for each child was coined for what for a social forestry program for clean air program for soil conservation program or it was for environmental protection program so it was coined for which of the following that is given below the slogan called as a tree for each child was was coined for for what a social forestry a clean air whether it was a soil conservation or whether it was environmental protection so it was basically for what yes waiting for the answers everyone uh, okay answer came very quickly yes but see this uh, i i told you this this if you remember this one the same question was taken when i was doing people development and environment topic but it is not coined by environmental protection program it is coined for a social forestry program now let's uh, understand uh, okay i think uh, i have missed the slide but yes a tree for social uh, sorry a tree for child uh, every child is not the term which is coined for uh, social uh, sorry no, not the term which is coined for environmental protection program but it is a term which is coined for social forestry program there was an exclusive slide for this but i don't know today something has went wrong with my slides up and down so i'll just check in uh, next uh, coming slides whether we have a slide for this i'll i'll just get to this question again okay now list uh, uh, yes now we have a list 1 and list 2 again list 1 talks about ozone hole it talks about greenhouse effect it talks about natural hazards it talks about uh, sustainable development whereas list 2 talks about the examples in the form of tsunami it it talks about uv radiations methane or ecocentrism let's go for that uh, yes neelam let me check i mean to say i'll just get back why that uh, slide i'll just come to that maybe that the slide is get given there for question number 7 i'll get back with the slide okay yes uh, uh, others keep on answering a uh, yeah dilip ram in paper 1 comprehensive uh, english comprehensive di was easy okay uh, now today was millennium development goals so if you see every alternate days no uh, in the previous year day there was sustainable development goals and today it was millennium development goals so it means it is also going you know in the form of what uh, alternate days meaning of ethernet uh, meaning of spam torjan house hacking okay so all the students who are having there are many students who are having their exam schedule tomorrow in ict spamming you know spoofing uh, torjan house virus uh, things please revise and go 
uh, now today's was millennium development so i can't tell whether it's 100% sustainable development but topics of millennium development and sustainable development please revise barriers of communication from day 1 it is given with reference to barriers of communication so that also important point you have to keep in mind national education policy 2020 was also a part uh, e pathshala e gyan kosh ndl that is uh, okay and aict so please i mean to say the student is taking lot of efforts to give you the topics uh, so uh, first of all mr ram very thank you very much on behalf of everyone that so much details you have given with your topic the way neelam has also did during her exam so all those who are going to appear not tomorrow immediately but in this week for the exam please make a note of this topics and just revise it without fail before going to the exam okay so yes now let's see uh ozone hole ozone hole yes we know that it is with reference to uv uh, that is ultraviolet radiations greenhouse with is with is reference to methane natural hazards yes tsunami and sustainable development ecocentrism now let's see what this ecocentrism refers to it is a term which is used in used by environmental philosophers and ecologists Uh, to denote a nat nature centered as opposed to human centered that is with the help of system of values so ecocentrism is nothing but a term which is used by environmental philosophers and ecologists in order to de uh, denote nature okay with reference to nature so that is how you have your option number a as correct sorry i just didn't check all the answers because i was just reading the lips message uh, you know with reference to all the questions yes uh any other student also was a part of today's examination in case something if you remember please do put it in the chat box yes now question number 9 uh let's see the the phrase tragedy of commons is the context of what so tragedy of commons refers to what is it the tragedy a tragic event related to damage caused by release of poisonous gas is it tragic conditions of poor people is it degradation of renewable free access resources or is it related to climate change okay what does this uh, uh, phrase or this uh, term tragedy of commons refers to yeah the lip thank you thank you very much but i mean to say uh, one thing i am really happy that the topics which were covered are there only thing is yes you can't predict the questions but all the topics were covered so i just uh, wish all the students who have two three days time that you know revision keep on revising things and yes and all the all the thanks to all the students you know just to connect back even after the exam gets over just to give that information of the question so thank you to you also for that efforts uh, of coming back and giving that questions yes so now there is a d uh, both the options are there b is also the option so let's see what the what does the phrase tragedy for of commons refers to so basically tragedy of commons is nothing but in context or in content of degradation of renewable so res, sorry renewable free access resources now what does this mean the tra tragedy of commons is a problem in economics that occurs when the individuals neglect the well-being of the society in the pursuit of you know personal gain so it it refers to what degradation of renewable resource access of resources so uh, it is you know the neglection uh, the neglecting part which is done by the society uh, for their own personal gain uh, with reference to you know with reference to the renewable resources so please remember rupali i don't know two three students from but my end then students said that everything is fine but from my end volume and everything is as usual uh, daily which i have okay so yes so sad tragedy of commons refers to what degradation of renewable free access to the resources okay so please keep it in mind yes uh, Dil dilip if you can just remember the question mr shashidhar reddy is asking for that exactly what because it's youth topic so what what's the focus point with reference to national education policy 2020 Okay question number 10 women are closer to nature than men what kind of perspective is this so this perspective that uh, in the stated statement women are closer to nature whether it is realistic whether it is uh, uh, 
essentialist whether it is feminist whether it is deep ecology so initially also i faced some technical error rupali so i don't know with reference to what it is but i'm just checking from my end also all the connections and everything so i just let let me sort it out while going through the questions okay so yes women are closer to nature than men what kind of perspective is this whether it is realistic whether it is essentialist whether it is feminist or whether it is uh deep ecology uh the thing is that i can't move the system now from one place to another maybe the range issue i don't know but uh, let's let's see i'll try my level best you keep on answering i'm just trying to fix it out okay okay so yes uh, yes uma uh, how was your paper that also uh, just let us know so women are closer to nature than men basically it is not a feminist uh, okay wait i'll i'll just check i need to shift uh, maybe little bit okay just a second give me uh, i have just kept the questions uh, ready so let me check out if really the voice is an issue from my end okay yes meanwhile i'm just uh, waiting for the answers just give me a second you know i'll just adjust the things uh yes so when we talk about women are closer to nature than men okay when we talk about what type of perspective it is so let's understand that this perspective is not feminist okay now just let me know if things are little bit clear okay so this is not a feminist uh, sorry this is not a feminist perspective it is actually called as essentialist now what does essentialist mean it is a set of attributes that are necessary to identify okay which is a philosophy given by plato that is idealism which helps all the things has an essence that is an idea or a form and that's the reason it is called as essentialist and not feminist now see feminist it means the one who supports the equal rights for women so this is not with reference to feminists it is with reference to what it is with reference to essentialist okay uh now also the thing is there is also issue right now also i don't know i have i have checked the system i have changed the place also i don't know what is wrong but anyways let's let's keep on you can at least see the questions uh, you have joined so let's not uh, you know waste the time a uh, state in india spending the largest amount on a uh, primary education so which of the following state in india has uh, spent a largest amount in primary education whether it is maharashtra kerala gujarat or tamil nadu so from the given state which is the state which has spends a, a largest amount with reference to primary education so let's understand yes yeah i'm moving ahead uh, because i don't at least this question is coming on the screen so you can just you know um, try to concentrate because i've checked from all the end uh, yes so the state uh, yeah so the state which spends a largest amount on primary education is the state of kerala is the state of kerala okay now uh, please make a note of it that is the state which have a large amount of spending on primary education is the state of kerala yes okay answers are coming i'm really sorry for uh, in case if it is some students are facing that low issue voice problem i'm really sorry because i tried my all the ends of technical checking but everything is fi fine from my end okay now uh, yes when we talk about kotari commission kotari commission has recommended a percentage of national income to be invested in education so what is the percentage amount okay so the percentage amount is coming as 10% it is 8% it is 6% or it is 
so now when we speak about this in one of the theory lecture of higher education we have clearly highlighted this topic under kotari commission that what percentage of national income is to be invested in education in the form of percentage so what it is whether it is 10 8 6 5 that's what you have to answer okay uma thank you for uh, updating with us overall how was your paper i didn't if you have written the message i think i have skipped something okay so yes the kotari commission has recommended a percentage to be invested in education out of of national income is not 8 many students have you know uh, written as 8% it's not 8 it is 6% we have done this in our theory class also percentage you people are little bit forgetting this is very factual so the kotari commission has recommended a part of national income now what is that part coming to that part is coming to 6% uh, kitty um, all the best okay maybe you are studying you have joined bit late in case if you move early so all the best do well and just update us like how the paper was and just keep your calm and give your best okay yes coming to question number 4 uh, 14 mhrd scheme that is vidwan is aimed at what we have just done at the starting of the class also vidwan is aimed at what creating a database and national research network making available e resources promoting enter uh, sorry promoting entrepreneurship among faculty and awarding national professorship to all the faculty so basically uh, what does uh, the scheme of vidwan refers to okay safina okay safina yours is also tomorrow all the best don't uh, just 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 ensure that whatever you have revised be confident about your efforts and give your best your mind should be calm that is very very important especially to crack your you know the start of your exam that is your paper 1 Yes so with one a very easy question it is you don't have to take lot of time to answer this question to me it is basically yes creating a database and national research network you know with reference to sorry a national research network uh, for uh, with reference to the faculty members or the researchers so with one is aimed at creating a database of all this okay yes next formulation of a long term low emission development strategies by each country was suggested under which of the following so when i talk about formulation of a long term low long term low emission development strategies which of by which each country are supposed to you know uh, do that so which was given under what was it under paris agreement was it on the montreal protocol was it at international solar alliance or was it at keto protocol so it was basically uh, for what formulation of long term low emission development strategies by each country was under yes ashwini i understood it was little bit typing error but i got what you what answer you wanted to tell yes we have done this we have done uh, i mean to say we have done all the protocols conventions okay conference very well uh please please make a note when it comes to emission development strategies it was noted under paris agreement paris agreement okay international solar alliance is not the right answer or other options if in case are given no it is paris agreement we have done this in detail n number of times okay so just be careful for that small small mistakes don't do uh, you have revised very well so just be careful okay now Yes coming to question number 16 which city has hosted the world future fuel summit and expo 2021 which happened in this year at the start of this year that is in the month of february so which is the city which has hosted world future fuel summit whether it is Bub uh, bhubaneswar whether it is jaipur whether it is new delhi or whether it is mumbai so which of the city has hosted this summit that is called as world Fu future fuel summit which was in the month of feb 2021 okay so waiting for the answers everyone yes uh, i told you little bit of current affairs with reference to your uh, people development and environment you should be little bit very careful about it so the city which hosted this summit was none other than new delhi let's just have a look at it 
okay so the world future fuel summit and expo which was held in new delhi between 16th and 17th of feb that is 2021 and the theme please keep this theme in mind theme can be a part of question also it was sustainable future fuel for global climate change challenges okay please keep the theme in mind that was a sustainable future fuel for global climate change it was organized by energy environment and foundation by and foundation in collaboration with ministry of petroleum Ga natural gas by government of india and niti aayog uh, that is the think tank of government of india which was established with an aim to achieve sustainable development goals so please remember under sdg this can be a part of question that world future fuel summit okay which was held in new delhi 2021 with a theme called as sustainable future fuel for global climate change within collaboration to you know niti aayog and the en energy and environment uh, collaboration okay now yesterday if you remember we have done the global index for climate okay in yesterday's class we have taken global index for climate today india ranks in global gender gap so please remember the question gender gap ma'am i am focusing on what uh, gender gap so it is basically what is the rank of india whether it is 150 156 1 140 or 145 okay with reference to 2021 okay so india ranks okay sumitra pradhan has just lighted up everyone's tension so relax mood okay uh yes so rank of india with reference to global gender gap index please remember yesterday what we did was global climate index okay today we are talking about global gap index so what is the rank of india with reference to global climate index 2021 yes those student who have attended the lectures will be able to understand because under uh, people development and environment i have taken all those indexes yes so the index for global gender gap was 140 now let's quickly have a look at it so when we talk about it it started since 2006 the global gender gap index which has been measuring the extent of gender based gaps among four dimensions now you should remember this four dimensions maybe the question can twisted so the four dimensions are with reference to economic participation and opportunity educational attainment health and survival and political empowerment okay so this this are the four dimensions under which the gender gap index is calculated and it tracks the progress uh, you know towards closing the gap now out of 156 countries india has ranked at 140 in the for the year 2021 so the global gender gap index for india in 2021 is at 140th rank yes good now coming to um, the size of computer memory because in initial the start this was the uh, the question which was asked in few uh, cycles so whether it is you have to suppose you are supposed to arrange it in ascending order so meg uh, megabytes gigabytes kilobytes and terabytes so how will you go with reference to ascending order so you have to just re uh, remember very well what type of order they want in the question whether it is ascending or whether it is descending okay uh i am really thankful to all the students because many of them complained regarding this voice but uh, still you know the students are active in giving the answers you can see the questions on the screen so thank you for that um yes ascending and please remember uh, when you you get a question in your examination check the uh, highest lowest or ascending descending be careful for this yes so when we talk about ascending order it starts with kilobytes then we have megabytes gigabytes and the terabytes okay so memory question is also seen little bit in an uh, initial uh, starting days memory question was asked frequently so students do not leave it uh, those are having it please revise the memory questions and terabytes those questions are not related to terabyte uh, petabyte zettabytes also please uh, revise and go very carefully okay yes now uh, here we have an 
I meant to say a question on communication. Okay, different types of communication. The match the following is based on that. So it talks about list one and examples, and in list two it talks about the type of communication. So list one talks about prayer and silence. Now I have changed this question. This question was been taken earlier also, but I have changed it. I'll tell you. it can be in the second form also first let us do this and we'll come to the second type of question also prayer in silence teacher talking to students outside the classroom the ceo of the company issuing a circular to the subordinates rumor mongering among the employees of an organization so what it will be called as vertical grapevine intrapersonal or group communication so let's let's wait and see the answers everyone what they are answering yes and i will tell you where i have changed this question uh, another form of question can be what okay okay so yes uh, very correct you people have answered that is prayer in silence that is intrapersonal communication a person talking you know within within a uh, teacher taking uh, talking to the students outside the classroom not students okay so yes it's a group communication the ceo of the company giving the circular to the subordinates that is upward and downward that is called as vertical communication rumors uh, yes mongering among the employees that is informal form of communication it's nothing but grape wine now here just one one very important announcement in one of the session i have taken the same question and that time i have used the word here as interpersonal now please remember when we talk about prayer in silence okay so now when we talk about prayer in silence it you means a uh, individual talking to the god irrespective god is not answering it's a one way communication but two individuals are talking so two it can be interpersonal communication also okay so just uh, just be careful that it can it can be a part of interpersonal communication so if you get the topic you should not be able to conf con uh, confuse okay uh, mansuri i know because you know i just am i i am not personally met you but i can understand you in form of you know you intense intention you get blank so just as i told you every day i keep on saying that uh, don't uh, you know uh, take that pressure because under pressure you are tend to make mistakes so whatever you have done you know that you have you know uh, given your best you have put lot of efforts if i am not wrong you set for your sa uh, set examination also so just relax okay Uh, since then you are working hard for your examination so whatever you have done just uh, revise it have a good sleep okay Pro have a proper breakfast in the morning and then go for your examinations okay don't take so much stress okay yes coming to question number 20 in a classroom content produced for a specific user will lead to what will lead to uh, personality development will lead to content filtering will lead to personalization or will lead to general academic integration okay yes lucky tomorrow okay kitty lucky i mean all the regular students are having tomorrow the exams uh, smrita uh, this grape wine means informal communication okay it's 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 it is called as informal communication which is not which is done in a very casual way but it is a part of communication so the second name for grape wine is informal communication yes neelam was the first if i'm not wrong to give the examination and come back and tell and hats off to her after that also she has not missed a class for a single day Praveen ji aapka english literature hai kya kal <laughs> tips is that i have only one tip is uh, my uh, guru mantra that is keep yourself keep your mind calm okay uh, be confident about yourself and give your best tomorrow is your final shot so you have to give your best and that is not possible by taking tension so this is the guru mantra which you are supposed to follow okay yes uh yes so in a classroom content produced for a specific user definitely will be called as what will be called as personalization okay mr dave what you have written lateral and diagonal communication uh what is the you have a doubt in that 
so you can you can just have type diagonal communications you know it is like uh, you can tell it as a cross communication from one department to another department department so you can use it as what in the cross communication lat yes uh, mr dave are you uh, listening okay just just a minute yes everyone yes this was the last question so we, uh, please remember that just give me one minute mr dave if you have any other doubt please put it in the chat box now all those students who have your examinations tomorrow once again all the best on behalf of global online university and just do your best don't you know don't keep any pressure in your mind whatever you have revised whatever you have learned please uh, do it very well and ensure that you know you are giving your best in whatever uh, you can if possible you can join us and tell us what was you know what exactly was a part of your question paper and once your question uh, exam is done just relax relax with your you know uh, in the form of uh, taking little bit of peace of your mind okay so yes uh, coming to mr dave your doubt uh, we, your doubt was with reference to two topics so i hope you understood what i said with reference to uh, communication of diagonal so diagonal uh, it is uh, with reference to one department to another now when i say lateral communication it can be in the form of like you know emails letters gossips also so that also can be a part of what it can be a part of your lateral communication okay i hope it is clear with you yeah thank you everyone yes so thank you everyone yes uh, take a chill pill uh, shobha yes lateral uh, communication i just now i gave you an examples okay in case if you uh if you still are having doubt it is basically your horizontal communication is also called as lateral communication so where your you know messages flow between an individual of the same level so it can be it can occur like uh, telephone calls which are made to the same level uh, memos which are given you know to the same level of employees or you know in the form of informal discussions meetings video conferencing which is done at the same level of uh, i mean to say people so that is called as what that is called as your lateral communication examples of lateral communication swarnali i have given you right now i have given you lateral communication example diagonal communication you can take you know the faculty of arts uh, in interacting with the faculty of science that is called as diagonal communication or the employees of marketing department you know talking with the finance department that's how you can go with diagonal is it clear Uh, yes crosswise uh, neelam sorry i missed your uh, uh, message earlier also but then uh, i hope this was also brought yesterday also one student ankit has referred this so hope she has uh, brought uh, it to the notice of the invigilator and hope her exam went very well and she had uh, you know Uh, submitted everything okay so yes all the best to everyone especially mansuri just relax and give your best and uh, just come and tell us how your paper was and don't take much pressure okay thank you everyone see you tomorrow in the class and i hope i'll just sort out the issue of my voice also i'll just look after that okay thank you everyone